Now, one problem that happens is that the logs, so the logs can become very large, so the very large logs because every all the transactions are being written on the logs, etcetera, 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 and suddenly one transaction finishes. Now, it does not make sense to go over all the logs for some very old transactions, but to to, to maintain the correctness, there has to be a way of saying that if the log is written for a particular transaction, all the writes in the transaction have actually gone to the database, the database has actually uh, seen the effect of this. So, why is it? Now, just to highlight my point, what is being done is that the following. So, there is the database which has contained the actual values of these uh, data items and then there is a temporary copy of the database. So, all the writes are temporarily changed in this. So, there is a temporary copy and the log records only the log if there is an entry in the log it only says that it has been changed here. Now, that does not mean that this has actually propagated to the database and has been done and this is the stable storage. So, this is this this is this part is the stable storage. Okay? That, so, this will never be lost. So, the question is if there are many, 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 many log entries then there are many, 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 many changes in the temporary thing, but it is not sure which temporary things have gone to the database. That is the whole idea. So, the logs can go very, very large and searching in the logs and finding out which transactions have started but not committed, which has all those things can become very much time consuming. Now, to prevent all of that, an idea is used which is called a checkpointing. I am sure you have, many of you have heard this uh, idea of checkpointing. Checkpointing essentially is trying to make sure that whenever a checkpoint is being taken on the log, everything up to the checkpoint is correct. Now, correct meaning the following thing is that, okay, so there is a very large log record and a checkpoint is taken. Now, this means that everything that is on the log is being put to the stable storage. So, the log up to that point is being put to the stable storage. More importantly, all the pending writes up to that checkpoint, all the pending writes are also flushed to the database. So, that means if I say, so there is an entry which says checkpoint in the log. So, if checkpoint is being done, so if there is a right entry for some transactions before the checkpoint, this effect has actually gone through to the database. This is made sure. How is it being made sure? It is being actually forced on the database. So, before the checkpoint is being done, it is actually forced on the database, the log, etcetera. The log is also maintained on the stable storage. So, the log record also goes, the log is also uh, written on the stable storage and all the write records in the log has gone to the database. It is made sure before the checkpoint entry is being made. Now, here is the point. Why is it uh, that a checkpoint entry will now help? Is that now, if a system crashes, all that the log needs to do is to find the last checkpoint it is sure that everything below before that is correct. So, it needs to worry only after of things after the checkpoint. So, even if the log is very large, everything up to this larger part of these things where the checkpoint has been taken is correct. So, it does not need to bother about it. So, that is the whole point. And just to take it a little bit further, so suppose there is a transaction commit T0 after which there is a checkpoint is being written. So, that means so, the fact that there is a checkpoint meaning that all the write operations for this below this has been correctly written. That means, all the operations of T0 have been correctly written. So, T0 does not need to be bothered about anymore. This is all done just because there is a checkpoint entry. So, T0 is nothing needs to be done. So, no redoing needs to be done for T0. That is fine. But there may be other problems in the sense that something there may be a checkpoint entry and then so after some point in time there is a commit to some transaction say T i. Okay. Now, what it is being guaranteed is that every write up to checkpoint is being done, but there may be write entries after the checkpoint and before the commit T 1 has been done. So, T i it is not guaranteed that all the entries all the writes of T i is being done correctly. So, T i must be redone this cannot be avoided. So, T i must be redone that is the thing and then anything suppose there is another thing where there is a start of T j and of course, there is no the start of T j may be here, the start of T j may be here and 
but there is no commit entry, there is no commit entry to TJ, that must be undone because again the, the checkpoint only guarantees that everything has been written correctly, but so there may be some write operations before the checkpoint and then the TJ may abort here. So, this instead of this thing, this may be aborted here or it may not even write abortion. So, TJ must be undone because the checkpoint only guarantees that the writes have gone through there. So, it must be undone. So, that is the thing. So, checkpoint, so any transaction just to summarize any transaction that has committed before the checkpoint entry is being made does not need to be bothered upon because all its writes have gone through correct. Anything that has committed after the checkpoint needs to be written and any other transaction that has started but has got no commit entry needs to be undone even if it is before the checkpoint that is the whole idea. Okay. Now, just to make it even more efficient this checkpoint can be augmented by the list of uh, transactions that are active at that point. So, instead of just writing checkpoint, so it can also say there is a list of entries. So, T L is a list of entries. So, T L essentially is a list. So, it can say T T 0 is active, T 2 is active, T 5 is active and so on. So, this is a list of entries. Okay. So, this list is written as part of the checkpoint entry. Now, after that there are some more log entries etcetera and suppose there is a crash here. Okay. So, once a crash happens the log is read backwards up to the checkpoint and the, so this is read backwards this is very importantly this is read backwards up to the checkpoint and the following thing is done. If there is a commit T i is found in this backward scan, then there is a redo list, there is a redo list where T i is added to the redo list. Okay. Now, on this scanning backward, if suppose on the other hand somebody found the start of T j, then there is an undo list where T j is added. Okay. And Suppose there is some other T k which started earlier. Now, note that scanning of the log goes only up to the checkpoint. However, what will happen is that since T k started before the checkpoint and has not committed, T k must appear somewhere in this T l. So, this is it must be in the active in the list of active transactions. So, this is the list of this is the list of active transactions. So, T k must be appearing somewhere in there. So, so T k is not found using this scanning, but T k is in the active list, then T k is also added to the undoing list. Of course, if T k has not been in the redo list, that means T k there is no commit T k entry. If, if, if there is a commit T k entry, then T k would have been already added to the redo list, then nothing needs to be done, but otherwise T k needs to be added to the undo list. Okay? So, this is the way how the redo list and the undo lists are being made. And then we follow the same thing. So, undos are first done in a reverse order and then the redos are being done in a forward order. So, the transactions in the undo list are first reverted back in the reverse order as they appear in the log and the, the, the transactions in the redo list are then done in the forward order as they appear in the log. Okay. And one more thing only the operations after the checkpoint. So, this is read only up to the checkpoint. So, only the operations after the checkpoint needs to be either undone or redone that is it because before that everything has been either undone or redone correctly. Okay. And here is an example to see. Suppose there is a start T 1 then there is a write T 1 B 2, 3, there is a starting of T 2 and then T 1 commits, then there is a write by transaction T 2 to another named item C with values 7, then there is a checkpoint. Now, this checkpoint will essentially say the list of active transactions which is only T 2 at this point. So, the checkpointing is a heavy operation when checkpointing is done lots of things need to be checked. So, start T 3, 
then there is a right of t3 for value a 1 9 then there is a commit of t3 then there is a start of t4 and finally there is a right of t4 for c 7 2 okay this is the entire list of log record that we see fine so what happens is that uh, so the first thing to find out is that uh, so then there is a crash at this point okay so now the first thing to find out is what is the list of undo and redo list so the undo list is the following so undo list and the redo list so the undo list is it is scanned backward there is a start t4 that is being noted so that is added to the undo list correct and then it goes to the checkpoint and sees that there is an active transaction t2 so that is also added to the undo list because that is not in the redo list so the redo list it it commits and it finds commit t3 so the redo list is at the list is only t3 now note that t1 is not appearing at all because t1 committed before the checkpoint that's it so then the order of operations will be the undo list first and then the redo list so there are two things in the undo list how will it, will it be done it's based on the when it uh, started etc so t4 is first undone then t2 is undone and finally t3 is undone so this is the order in which these things will be done and the order of operations will be the following so for T4, the operation is the C is written back to the old value, which is 7. C is written back to the old value, and that is the only operation for uh, T4. For T2, nothing appears here, so no operation is being done, even though it has written something back. Because you see, the point is it goes only up to the checkpoint and do, does the redoing, redoing and undoing of only those operations that appear up to the checkpoint. And for T3, the redoing of uh, this thing needs to be done. So, the A is uh, written the new value of 9. So, that is the way this uh, whole uh, scheme with checkpointing takes place. Okay. We will have two more uh, small things to cover. Uh, so, the first thing is the uh, very small uh, issue of log records. So, the logs are also written to the stable storage, etc. And so every time a database does a write operation or a read operation, something is being written to the log. Now the question is, the log is maintained as a temporary list in the main memory and the log needs to be written to the database or not to the database, the log needs to be written back to a some stable story. So how many times will the log be written? So there is a concept of log record buffering, which means that not every time a log record is being done, the log is written back to the stable storage. A couple of records are buffered together and then this is uh, output to the stable storage. The reason is the same uh, reason that we saw all those uh, why, the, why the entire disk page is accessed together. So all the log records that fit into one disk block is first filled up and then the disk block is written back to the uh, disk or the stable storage. That's the and the records are of course flushed in the order in which they appear in the log. So this is in the order of which they appear in the log. And then this concept of force writing is used. Force writing meaning everything that is written, that needs to be written is forcefully written back to the disk. So this is in the, if you know this uh, programming languages, C etc. This what they are called is a flush operation. So flush means that it is surely gone to the stable storage. So, that is the flush. So, this force writing of the log records is being used and even so if there are some commit entries etc that is also flushed fine and all the log records. So, if there is a block of data that is written to the database all the log records before to it must be done before. So, this log must be flushed before the actual uh, the writes are gone through. So, that is the thing. So, the log records are written before the actual thing. So, that is why this is sometimes called a write ahead logging. That means, before the logging, before the actual write is done, the log is being written ahead. So, this is the write ahead logging or this is sometimes known as the 
wall rule wal because it's a right ahead, right ahead logging so that's the thing that's all the thing about this uh, log the, there is one more type of database recovery scheme that can be followed which is called the shadow paging and although we talked about it very briefly uh, last time a little bit more detail on this is as follows so the shadow paging is essentially there are two copies of the database are maintained now okay we will uh, assume that there are two page tables in the os type so essentially forgetting about page tables the details of it there are two copies of the database are maintained and the database is broken up into disk blocks or pages so these pages the list of these pages are maintained and then there are two copies the first one is the current page table page mean the disk block and the other one is the shadow page table fine so these are the two copies that are maintained okay the shadow page table is maintained on the disk this is maintained on the disk and no changes are done to it so no changes are done on the shadow page table so whenever something needs to be changed the corresponding page in the current page table is what is being changed okay now so all the updates etc goes to the current page table now whenever a transaction commits all the changes that are being made to the current page table all those things are flushed to the disk so this is all flushed to the disk correct so what is what does flushing to the disk mean the flushing to the disk means these are written to the corresponding pages in the shadow page table which is on the disk so that is being flushed to the shadow page so the shadow page table is actually modified only when there is a commit when a transaction commits so that's the commit operation that's being done and if this is followed then actually what can be shown is that there is no recovery is needed if this is that is a simple scheme no recovery is needed what does it mean to say no recovery is needed because you see what happens is when a transaction fails what happens all the copies or all these things are on the current page table which is simply lost that's it there is no the shadow page table contains all the all the effects of only the committed transactions so that means nothing needs to be changed for the shadow page table and only the current page table is what is being changed so that is why this is also called a no undo slash no redo scheme because nothing needs to be undone nothing needs to be redone however at the end of all of these things the shadow page table uh, is the new new uh, is the new correct thing so that's the thing so this this works uh, this seems to be very useful right because no recovery is needed but there are some practical uh, problems that happen with this first of all there are too many pages that needs to be copied so the efficiency is not much the commit overhead also may be too high because lots of things may be needed to the uh, shadow page table whenever a transaction commits and uh, the thing is serial it, it it only it only it really only happens for serial transactions so the transactions must come one after another if the transactions are being interlaced then this uh, this scheme may not work so this only works for serial transactions the advantage of course is that no recovery is needed and so there is no logs no overhead of writing the logs etc 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 so logs are not needed so there is no overhead of writing the logs so that ends the topic on database recovery management systems and we studied uh, some couple of schemes one using logs and with checkpointing etc and finally the shadow paging we will next cover the important issue of schedules.